Are you considering testosterone therapy, but worried about increased heart problems? Maybe you've read some research, you've heard in the media that testosterone therapy may increase heart problems. My name is Dr. Tara Nellick, and in this video, we're going to answer the question, does testosterone therapy increase heart problems? We're going to cover some of the older research on testosterone replacement therapy, the FDA warning label, and some of the newer research, and I'll also explain what I do in my patients practice to minimize heart problems with testosterone replacement therapy. So I make these videos to help you go beyond basic health. So please read this disclaimer before we jump into the details. So before we can answer the question, does testosterone therapy increase heart problems? we need to define what we mean by heart problems. For me personally, that's gonna include any symptom or objective measurement that's showing a problem in the cardiovascular system. So this could be things as simple as heart palpitation or high blood pressure, or as severe or more troubling as something like a heart attack or stroke. But for the purposes of this video, we should narrow the focus in on major cardiovascular events which are gonna be things like heart attack and stroke, because that's what most of the research is concerned with. And most of the clinical trials that look at this are looking at those two things. And just as an aside, I do have several videos discussing the impact of high hematocrit on testosterone replacement therapy and blood clots and TRT, and also the effect of blood pressure on TRT or what happens with blood pressure when you're taking TRT. So we're not going to go into a lot of detail on those things in this video. So what does the research say about testosterone therapy increasing the incidence of heart problems? Well, the clip no version goes something like this. Some, but not all older studies find an increased incidence of cardiovascular events, which basically led to an FDA warning label being put on some TRT products and then a new, larger, long-term placebo-controlled trial seems to refute some of the earlier findings about negative effects of testosterone replacement therapy on heart problems and cardiovascular system. So that's a clip no version being that the newest evidence is showing that testosterone therapy probably doesn't have a negative impact on heart attacks and strokes. So if you want some of the more nuanced points about this, you'll want to keep watching. And I'm also going to discuss how I approach this in my patients, how I minimize any potential for heart problems when my patients are on testosterone therapy. And so this first meta-analysis in 2013 is showing a clear association of increased cardiovascular events in those that were on TRT and included almost 3,000 people, mainly older men who experienced about 180 cardiovascular-related events. And it showed that testosterone therapy increased the risk of these cardiovascular-related events. And interestingly, the effect seemed to vary with the source of funding, but not with the baseline testosterone levels. So in the trials that were not funded by the pharmaceutical industry, they seemed to have higher levels or higher incidence of cardiovascular events reported in those studies, according to this meta-analysis. So that's interesting, maybe a little bias going on there. In a separate meta-analysis in 2016 showed a actual lack of significant association between testosterone and cardiovascular events. However, they noted it was essential to keep in mind the possibility of a dose-dependent relationship there and also that the risk may go up in certain subsets of the population, such as the elderly or those with more cardiovascular risk factors. And I think the thing about the dose of testosterone and the amount of monitoring being done is crucial for getting the most out of your testosterone therapy with the minimum amount of risk. Clap. So far, we have one meta-analysis of including several thousand people showing increased risk, and we have another meta-analysis showing no significant association of cardiovascular events with testosterone therapy. So what about the FDA and other regulatory bodies? Have they had anything to say about testosterone therapy or testosterone replacement therapy in cardiovascular disease and heart problems? Well, I'm glad you asked. In 2015, the FDA introduced labeling changes for testosterone replacement therapy products resulting from concerns from a few studies that were done in 2013 that showed 
an increased incidence of cardiovascular events in these studies. However, it should be noted that warnings like this are not that uncommon. For instance, androgel, a common testosterone replacement therapy product, already had 15 such warning labels on it already. Things like secondary exposure to women and children, polycythemia, edema or swelling, gynecomastia, hepatotoxicity, et cetera, et cetera. Not all of these claims are founded in evidence, but it just goes to show you that this type of warning shouldn't always be taken as alarmist. It's just trying to inform you of the possibility of something like this going up. And just to put a finer point on this, the warning itself was actually quite mild, stating that long-term clinical safety trials have not been conducted to assess the cardiovascular outcomes of testosterone replacement therapy. They go on to state that epidemiological studies and randomized controlled trials have shown mixed results, making the, ter the determination of the risk of major cardiovascular events kind of unknown. And this is still from the label itself. And they go on to say it's not clear if it's increasing the risk of non-fatal strokes, non-fatal heart attacks, or cardiovascular disease death from testosterone replacement therapy. And I'm summarizing a little bit, but the final statement is some studies, but not all, have reported increased risk of these cardiovascular events in association with the use of testosterone replacement therapy. And I think that's exactly the same thing that I'm pointing out here is that some studies have shown increased risk and some studies have shown no increased risk. But there is some newer, stronger evidence to suggest that there is actually no increased risk of these particular cardiovascular events that we're referring to. So the Traverse trial was led by the Cleveland Clinic and explored the impact of TRT on the incidence of major adverse cardiovascular events. These were all men that actually had hypogonadism and also had pre-existing or high risk of cardiovascular disease. Our results, this trial actually isn't complete, but some of the preliminary results are available. And according to the results presented at the Endocrine Society's meeting in 2023, they said that testosterone replacement therapy did not lead to a higher incidence of major adverse cardiovascular events, such as heart attack or stroke. Major cardiovascular events occurred in about 7% of patients in the testosterone group, compared to about 7.3 in the placebo group, suggesting no significant increase in cardiovascular risk from testosterone replacement therapy over a mean duration of 22 months. This is the exact type of research that we can use and lean into because a lot of times when men are going on testosterone replacement therapy, they are at a higher risk of cardiovascular disease. Many people with metabolic syndrome, diabetes, prediabetes are the ones that are feeling tired. They have low testosterone and so they're going on these things. So they, in some ways, may be a selection bias for people that are going on testosterone replacement therapy to begin with to feel better. Other findings of this study show that not only was there not an increased risk on those on TRT, but there seemed to do better in terms of their death rate from the cardiovascular events that were seen. And you can see this in the chart up here. With all that being said, I would be remiss to overlook the fact that they did find an increased rate or incidence of things like atrial fibrillation and venous blood clots. It's also important to note that they did do dose adjustments to maintain the testosterone levels between 350 and 750 nanograms per deciliter which is nice to see. A lot of the studies are just basically, are you on testosterone or are you not? So maybe you put it on one day a week or every single day, everyone was kind of lumped in the same group. They also discontinued the testosterone replacement therapy in those that had higher uh, testosterone levels or had hematocrit that exceeded 54%. And so those people were basically excluded from the study if that happened. So what's my opinion on this or what does my clinical experience say about this? Well, I've worked with patients that have stents and those are present before they start TRT. And I've worked with people that have had different cardiovascular disease problems atrial fibrillation, obviously high blood pressure before going on TRT. And basically my opinion is you need to be monitoring your levels. You need to be monitoring things like your hematocrit. If you do have known cardiovascular disease risk, you want to be much more mindful of 
how high your dose is, and also how high your hematocrit is. Do you have any clotting risk factors? What can we do to minimize those risk factors like monitoring platelet counts, monitoring your homocysteine, monitoring your inflammation, and really just trying to optimize all those things, including cholesterol and any cardiovascular disease risks. What I know for sure is that testosterone replacement therapy can provide an immense benefit to a man's well-being and in some cases can transform their life entirely. In most or many cases, though, it's providing more of a marginal benefit. And I think the difference between the two is that someone that transforms their life entirely uses that testosterone, the improved energy, the improved motivation to start exercising, to eat right, cook right, and basically live better and transform their lifestyle. There's simply no medication, supplement, hormone, or whatever that you can take to replace exercise or consistently eating good and challenging yourself with harder and harder exercise to keep your body strong. So if you do use testosterone replacement therapy to help you with your energy, motivation, and things like that, you want to use that extra motivation to help further enhance your cardiovascular system through doing more exercise, eating better, and gradually improve your health. Instead, if you just add testosterone to an okay diet and infrequent or inconsistent exercise, you're riding the upper limits of physiological levels on your testosterone. You don't donate blood when you're supposed to, and you may actually be making things worse in your body. I believe that taking someone from really low testosterone to physiological levels will almost always help their cardiovascular system. And if you already have some cardiovascular issues, we just need to be more careful with the level of testosterone that you're getting. We need to monitor your blood pressure more, your hematocrit more, basically test you more to make sure we're not overdoing it and also encourage you to do the things that are going to make your body stronger in general. So how can you use this information to make your own decisions on whether or not you should use testosterone replacement therapy with heart problems? Well, it's really a benefit risk kind of thing. So for men with clear low testosterone, the benefits of testosterone therapy in terms of energy, motivation, and things like that clearly outweigh the risks. And again, it's going to depend on whether or not you actually get some of those benefits. There's lots of reasons why people have low energy to begin with, and it's not always from lack of testosterone. But if you do get those benefits out of it to minimize your risks in terms of cardiovascular disease, you want to use that increased motivation, increased energy to then do the right things that are going to further lower your risks. So the research findings are a bit mixed, but I think the earlier studies seem to link testosterone therapy to a increased risk of cardiovascular vascular issues, while more recent nuanced and refined research is finding that when your testosterone is carefully managed, it doesn't go above what physiological levels are. The increase of cardiovascular disease problems or heart problems are going to be minimal. And the silver lining in that is that those people that did have cardiovascular events when they were on the TRT tended to do better in terms of their overall outcome and recovery from those events. So for me and my patients, the effect on testosterone replacement therapy on the cardiovascular system in general, it remains to be a bit inconclusive with the evidence pointing mostly in favor of the benefits if your levels are managed properly, it indicates the need for more careful monitoring in people with existing cardiovascular issues or those that have a history of it and want to make sure they're minimizing their risk. Now, of course, there are some risks that we've alluded to here. And if you want to find out more about the risk of blood clots when you're on TRT, check out this video here. Hopefully this video helps you understand, does testosterone therapy increase the risk of heart problems? If you do have questions about anything in this video, drop them in the comment section. I'm happy to answer your question. If you want a more customized answer, consider joining the membership program. We'll have more time and attention to dedicate to your answer. Thanks again for watching. We'll see you next time.